something tells me we are going to be great friends. I like you already more than I can say, and my first impressions of people are never wrong. <laughs> How nice of you to like me so much after we have only known each other for such a comparatively short time. <laughs> <laughs> Will you sit? I may call you Cecily, may I not? If you wish. And you will always call me Gwendolyn, won't you? With pleasure. Then that is all quite settled, is it not? I hope so. <laughs> Perhaps this might be a favorable opportunity for my mentioning who I am. My father is Lord Bracknell. You have never heard of Papa, I suppose. I don't think so. <laughs> Outside the family circle, Papa, I am glad to say, is entirely unknown. I think that is quite as it should be. The home seems to me to be the proper sphere for the man, and certainly once a man begins to neglect his domestic duties, he becomes painfully effeminate, does he not? And I don't like that. It makes men so very attractive. Uh, Cecily, Mama, whose views on education are remarkably strict, has brought me up to be rather short-sighted. It is part of her system. So do you mind my looking at you through my glass? Oh, no, not at all, Gwendolyn. In fact, I am very fond of being looked at. Oh, I, that is so 
never travel without my diary. One should always have something sensational to read on the train. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry if it is any disappointment to you, dear Cecily, but I am afraid that I have the prior claim. <laughs> well, it would distress me more than I can tell you, Gwendolyn, if it caused you any mental or physical anguish, but at the same time, I feel bound to point out that since Ernest proposed to you, he has clearly changed his mind. <laughs> the poor boy has been entrapped into any foolish promise. I shall consider it my duty to rescue him at once and with a firm hand. <clears throat> but whatever unfortunate entanglement my dear boy may have gotten himself into, I will never reproach him with it after we are married. <laughs> Do you allude to me, Miss Cardew, as an entanglement? Mm -hmm. You are presumptuous. On an occasion of this kind, it becomes more than a moral duty to speak one's mind. It becomes a pleasure. Do you suggest, Miss Fairfax, that I entrapped Ernest into an engagement? <laughs> How dare you? This is no time for wearing the shallow mask of manners. When I see a spade, I call it a spade. <laughs> well, I am very glad to say that I have never seen a spade. It is obvious that our social spheres are vastly different. <clears throat> Shall I tea here as usual, miss? <laughs> yes, as usual. some tea, Miss Fairfax. Thank you. <laughs> Detestable girl, but I require tea. <laughs> sugar? No, thank you. Oh, sugar is not fashionable anymore. <laughs> Tea with 
lumps of sugar. And so I ask most distinctly for bread and butter. You have given me cake. <laughs> I am known for the extraordinary sweetness and the gentle disposition of my nature. But I warn you, Miss Cardew, you may go too far. To save my poor, innocent, trusting boy from the machinations of another girl, there is no length to which I will not go. <laughs> from the moment I met you, I distrusted you. I felt that you were false and deceitful. I am never <sighs> deceived in such matters. My first impressions of people are invariably yes. right. Well, it seems to me, Miss Fairfax, that I must be trespassing upon your valuable time. No doubt you have several other calls of a similar character to make all about the neighborhood. <laughs> Ernest! Oh! A moment. May I ask if you are engaged to be married to this young lady? She is a necessity? Well, of course not. I could have put such an idea into your pretty little head. Thank you. You may. <laughs> See, I, must, I, I knew there must be some slight, slight error. Gwendolyn. <clears throat> The gentleman whose arm is at present around your waist is my dear guardian, Mr. John Worthing. I beg your pardon. <laughs> this is Uncle Jack. Jack? Oh! Oh, here is Ernest. My own love. Mm, a moment, Ernest. Might I ask if you are engaged to be married to this young hmm? lady? <laughs> to what young lady? Oh, good heavens, Gwendolyn! Yes, to good heavens, Gwendolyn. <laughs> So, what could have put such an idea into your pretty little oh, head? Thank you. <laughs> I felt there was some slight error. The gentleman who is now embracing you is my cousin, Mr. Algernon Moncrief. <laughs> Algernon Moncrief. <laughs> is your name Algernon? Your name really John? I could deny it if I liked. I could deny anything if I liked. But my name certainly is John. I've been John for years. A gross deception has been practiced on the both of us. <laughs> my poor wounded Cecily! Oh, sweet wronged Gwendolyn! You will call me sister, will you? I think I should be allowed to ask my guardian. An admirable idea. Mr. Worthing, there is just one question I would like to be permitted to put to you. Where is your brother Ernest? We are both engaged to be married to your brother Ernest, so it is a matter of some importance to us to know where your brother Ernest is at present. Well, Cecily, it is very difficult for me to be forced to speak the truth. It is the first time in my life I have ever been reduced to such a painful position, and I'm really very inexperienced in doing anything of the kind. However, I will tell you quite frankly that 